In this lesson, we'll look at repetition structures, often referred to as loops, where we have a block of code that executes multiple times. And there are two different types of repetitions in programming. One is a conditional repetition, where it continues to repeat based on a certain condition, while well, that condition is true. Or a fixed iterative, where we know how many times that loop should execute. In the previous lesson, we looked at conditional structures, and so we're going to talk about conditional loops or conditional repetition structures. Let's contrast that with what we learned about the if statement in Python last week. So we saw there are three types of if structures. The first one is just a simple if, where we're asking a question. If that condition or that question is true, we do some process, and we continue on with the program. If it's not true, we skip that process and just continue on with the program. In an if-else, we have two different forks. We have a true fork. Again, this process occurs if the condition is true. If it's false, however, we do this process. Either way, we end up at this point and continue on with the execution of the program. Then we saw we can use an elif, or uh, what's referred to as an else if in most other languages. It's just abbreviated here in Python, and we have an if structure. And if that's true, it does something. If it's false, we ask another question. That's going to be the elif. Do that process if it's true. And we can have as many elifs here as we need. But eventually, we end up with an else. This is the catch-all. So if all of these are false, we do this. Either way, we continue on with the execution of our program. So it does one of, in this case, one of these four forks, but only one. Now let's compare the if structure to a loop. And there are two types of loops. As I mentioned, there's a for loop, which is the fixed iterative, and there's a while loop, which is a conditional structure. Either way, we flowchart these the same way. Uh, for the while loop, we're asking a question if that's true we're performing a process and we come back and as long as that question is true we continue to perform that process over and over and over again once that condition reaches false then we continue on with the rest of our program in a for loop we have a counter and as long as this is in range so we're asking is my counter within the provided range then we execute this loop over and over again once we're outside of the range it continues on. So the, the difference here simply is the flow in that an if statement, we're doing the process once and then continuing on in a loop, we're doing the process and coming back through the loop. So in our while structure, we're simply using the word while and our Boolean expression, which evaluates the true or false, and then the code block that we want to have executed more than once. It might be one statement, it could be a hundred statements or more. These statements are indented under the while uh, statement, just like we saw with the if, the elif, and the else, that that block of code is indented, usually four spaces. In a while loop, because this boon is going to be true, we do need to include some type of statement that eventually may change that boolean expression. Because at some point, we want that to become false. Otherwise, we're in what's called an endless loop, a loop that never ends, and it's going to run forever. So here's an example. I have x equals 1. I'm going to print the phrase beginning of the loop. And then while x is less than 11, I'm going to print x. So the first time through the loop, it's going to print 1. Then we're going to increment x by 1. x now becomes 2. Back through the loop again. Prints 2. Add 1. x becomes 3. And so forth. So it's going to end up printing 1 through 10. And finally at 10, x becomes 11. And our condition here is 11 less than 11, or x less than 11. Well, when x is 11, that's not a true statement. It's a false statement. So it's going to exit the loop and continue with the next line, which is print the loop is finished. Let's take a look at this in uh, Python. All right, I am in the idle integrated development editor for Python. And I've entered the program that we were just looking at where x is 1. We're going to print the beginning of the loop and then enter into our while loop. And that while loop will execute as long as x is less than 11. Each time through the loop, we're going to print x and increment x by 1. So this loop will run from the values of x being 1 
to 10, and each time it's a loop, it will print that number. One, two, three, four, all the way to 10, each on a separate line. When x becomes 11, it's gonna kick out of this loop and continue with the next line, which is print, the loop is finished. Let's watch this run over on the right-hand side. I'm gonna save my program. And so we see the beginning of the loop, and then we see our 10 numbers, and then we see the loop is finished. Let's create another program. I'm just gonna do a couple of new line characters. And we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna set X back equal to one. I wanna know what the sum of those 10 numbers are though. From one to 11. So again, I'm gonna copy this code. Do a couple blank lines so we separate this. Uh, this time we're going to go x1 through 11. We're going to print x, but we're also going to sum by the value of x. And then we will print the sum is. And we'll place sum into 0. And so now let's run. Save my source. So there's our first loop. Here's our second loop, same thing, one through 10. But the sum of these numbers, one through 10, is 55. I'm gonna come back over and do another one. Again, I'm just gonna print a couple of blank lines. And one thing you can use loops for is to get repeated input from a user and then have some type of designation that if it equals a certain value, we'll say a minus one, that the loop will exit. So I have a variable called total equals zero. I'm gonna create a variable called value, and here we're gonna get the integer of an input from the user put my colon at the end here with a space, get rid of this colon. Okay, and then we're gonna use a while loop. And while value does not equal minus one, we're gonna add value to total. And I'm gonna copy my value equals statement because I want to ask that again within the loops. They're adding another number. And I'll continue that loop until they enter a minus one. At the end of that though, we want to print the total is, we'll do a placeholder of zero. And we'll simply display total in that placeholder. So let's run this. So we get our first loop, we're going from one to 10, our second loop in our program where we're summing the values from one to 10, and now it's asking us to enter an integer. So I'm gonna put in 10, I'll put in six, I'll put in seven, that should give us 23, and let's do a 15 which should give us 38 and then we do a minus 1 and we're told the total is 38 so we're keeping a running total simply using a while loop and asking the user to re-enter their value each time through that loop we'll be using loops a lot as we progress through this course these are basic foundational structure in programming along with the condition structures and in the next video we'll look at how to use a for loop which utilizes a counter.